Hi, hi guys. Thank you for tuning in to my channel today. This is your favorite tea time spinner, your favorite tea tip Kirsten Valentine. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your very busy schedule to watch this video. Do not forget to subscribe by pushing that red button on the right of the screen. The great bell button for notifications in that way you know when I go live streaming or when a new video has been uploaded. Uh, do not forget to share this video with your family and friends. Support my channel. Support my channel by sharing this video, promoting this video, you know, uh, referring people to my videos. Share them with your neighbors, family, friends, colleagues, and church members. And also remember to leave a comment in that way we keep the education knowledgeable and mainstream in our communities and always remember to like. Thank you very much for tuning in to my channel today. Hmm. I want you all to wish you... This is a story that happened so many years ago. And this experience I had was in my early early teens when I got into my early teens I experienced it when I got into my um, early teen, um, early teens and then up to my middle teens when I was 16 17 this was over three dec decades ago um, I had just got into secondary school you know, there are some experiences that happens to you. Some things happens to you when you're growing up and you begin to wonder, why is this thing happening to me? Why me? Um, what have I done? Am I ugly? Am I repulsive? Am I irritating? You know, you think about all sorts and you just can't get an answer to it. I think what I'm talking about is it covers everything it covers lies it covers uh, bullying it covers the words that we speak from our mouth that actually does manifest it covers knowing god and it covers prayers i remember i it's taken me all these years to um, come decide to share this video um, because I believe that a lot of people have gone through it and it has affected them in so many ways. I believe that some people are going through it. Bullying has got nothing to do with age. You could be bullied at your workplace. You could be bullied inside your family by a family, family member. You could be, be bullied in school. You could be the victim. It could be you're the victim or you are the person who is bullying somebody else. You are the bullier. It could be anything. But there is one thing that we'll learn from it. I would love to share this experience with you. I had just come, got into my first year in secondary school. And, you know, when you come out from your primary school and you go into your secondary school, the environment is different. Because in your secondary school, you have much more mature people um when you're in your primary school i remember in my primary school it was a primary a, a private primary school um, in a very nice area uh in the in the city and state and country that i grew up in um we used to call our teachers if it's a female we'll call them auntie and if it's um, a male teacher we'll call them uncles we, did, we, didn't, we never called them sir or miss. Um, we were, my, 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 in my school, we, it was like a family. We wanted to, we didn't want to, it, it, the, the head of the school 
the environment and everything about the school. They didn't want us to make us feel that we, we were in a camp or something. We, it just, they wanted to make us feel that we were home. So all my life, throughout the time I started uh, my nursery school to my primary school, from the ages of three to when I got into secondary school, I always called everybody uncle and auntie. And I didn't know anything or did anything else. Okay, here's the story. You know, when you're in your secondary school, you have three terms. Uh, in England, in, in, in Western world, we call them semesters. So semester means terms, you know, T-E-R-M-S, term. You got the first term, you got the second term, you got the third term. It's just like when you say first semester, second semester, third semester. So it's the same thing. So you get my gist. So um, in, in a third semester, the third semester, which is the third term uh, in the educational system, um, is when you do your final exams and you're promoted to the next class. I was in Form 1. I was in my first year uh, in secondary school, which would be Form 1. Oh, small girl. <laughs> so um, on our... our Third semester exams, which will be our promotion exams, um, we be about like I think forty four in the class, and the school authorities decided to split um, each class in two parts and um, take half of the first class, the half half of it of the class to the next class which will be form two form two is the second second year in secondary school and they are a class higher than us so what they did in a promotional exam which is the third term exam was to split the half of the class and took they took half of the class to form two and they brought form two of the same class to join us I think it was a way to curb out cheating in exams. You know, when you have students cheating and all that. And the principal of the school, the school authorities thought that when they brought a class, uh, which is ahead of us to our class, we'll be so scared. Because in our school, my secondary school, it was discipline and education. That was the motto. It was discipline and education. And the, the principal of our school was a Scottish lady. And we had... We had teachers from America, from Ireland, from England. We had foreign teachers. Oh, yes. That's, as my secondary school was so high level. It was strict. It was like an exclusive school. It was the best in the state. And I remember people came from all over Nigeria to come to that school. And you had to pass your exams. And when you did your common entrance, you still had to do a test. If you don't pass, they don't take you. That's how high standard it was. So um, in, 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 when we finished our exams, because we did different subjects, we did maths, we did English, we did English literature, we did home economics, we did, um, we did um, all the subjects, we did so many subjects. We did fine art, we did Bible knowledge, we did history, we did so many subjects. And um, on this day, which is the last, which was the last day of our exams, because sometimes our, our exams, I remember our exams used to take two weeks because they had to space the uh, dates and subjects out. Sometimes we did two subjects in a day in exam. So you had to read for two subjects uh, because you got to write the exams for those days, uh, for those two subjects on that day so sometimes we had a day in between to rest to study and then come the next day for the exam so on this day we had our final paper was agricultural science and fine art i think that was that was the last 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 subject to be written in our exam and that was the last day for the exam and so finished the exam uh, agriculture i was an average student 
you know and don't forget that some of these subjects were new to me okay let me go straight to the point so when we finish the exams, obviously the Form 2 students left to go to their class and the Form 1 students from our class came from the Form 2 section and they were coming back. And just then, uh, a relative of mine who happens to bear the same surname as me, but we're not the same dad, but we're relatives uh, from the same large family, happened to be coming back from um, her class because she was the beat they took out to place in another class. So as she was coming back, she saw me with a book, a, an exercise book. And then she came, oh, you are the one who stole this book. You, you, you stole this book, blah, blah, blah. Oh, this person has been looking for this book. So you have the, so you are the one that stole this book. I'm going to tell her. And I said, wait, 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 wait. You know, that's, that's not, because we finished the exam, everybody was happy, we were all talking about the questions, you know how it is in secondary school those days, where you're going through the questions with your friends, what did you write, things like that, and I happened to see um, this exercise book on the floor, so I picked it up, and I looked at it, because I was thinking, oh, somebody must have dropped it, because what happens is that all your subjects, you keep them, because in your final exams, that would be your final exams, your form five exams, that you write that takes you into higher institution like the Polytechnic, College of Education, and University. All the subjects and all the questions they have asked you right from your very first year in secondary school, they ask you in your final exams. So most people keep their notes because they have to revise and go back to what they have learned in, uh, from their first year. So I saw this book and I saw it on the floor and I thought, oh my God, this book is on the floor. So I picked it up. I was looking at it. I was like, so I was putting it in my bag and I realized it was for my friend. And, um, and I never realized that uh, one of her exercise book in her subject in agriculture was missing and she misplaced it or maybe it was stolen. I don't know. I don't know the story, but I saw it and I picked it up and I put it out. You know, as I was putting it in my bag. This person just walked in. She happens to be in the same class as me. Walked in and she was saying or whatnot. And I said, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. And before I, I had one blink, I saw uh, this. She went to call uh, this person who was my classmate and the people. And it so happened that uh, my classmate... Uh, who she went to call and lied to was somebody I had known from my primary school days. We didn't go to the same primary school, but my primary school was very next door to our house. So when I used to wait outside after closing time for the driver to pick us up to go home, she was coming into her house. So we knew each other like that for so many years. And we used to say hello. We used to wait to each other. And it was so fortunate that we ended up in the same secondary school and in the same class. So we, we were friends up to that very day and that very moment. So this relative of mine, who we were in the same class together, whom I never knew before, but got to know, and she was introduced to me by my dad. I said we were cousins and we so happened to be in the same class. And we started talking and we became friends ran to my friend who happens to be in the same batch in the other class and I don't know what she told her and my friend whom I have known since my primary school days who happens to be my classmate and we sat together in the same bench came and she was shouting and accusing me she called me all manners of names not even giving me the time or the space. She didn't even listen to what I had to say. Nothing. So I said, come and take. I found it on the floor. No, no, no. No. She called me. In fact, she called me all manners of names. I don't want to um, repeat it, but you could imagine what it was. And she stormed out. She didn't take her exercise book. And that was it. She never spoke to me. And that was the day 
the name calling, the bashing, the character assassination, the bullying started. And it went on for four years. It went on for four years. That it got to a stage where I almost told my dad that I wanted to change secondary schools because I could not cope. But I was too scared to tell my dad because it would become worse. He's going to ask, why would you want to change schools from the best secondary school girl, uh, school, uh, girls, secondary, um, uh, uh, girls secondary school in the whole of the country that everybody wants to come to? Even we had Ethiopians in our school. We had people from Eritrea in our school because they were diplomats and they used to bring their children to my school. Those days, I'm talking about the early 80s, you know. So um, well, my dad would have asked me. So he would have come to my school to find out. So I kept quiet and I suffered the abuse and then bullying for four good years. From the person I thought I knew, from the person I thought was my cousin, because it became the three of them, they ganged up. One who knows my dad very well, whose mom is related to my family. One who, who answers, the, uh, the second one who answers the same surname as me, who comes from the same large family as me, whom I had done nothing to but to help and support. Who, uh, you know, um, you know I, I, she was my relative. I accepted her. I was friendly with her, you know. But she, you know, she was part of the group. And then another, and then this my friend, whom I thought was my friend, who ended up accusing me, believing what my cousin said, and um, whom I have known for so many years. The three of them ganged up. I remember sometimes in every class, I never repeated the class, I was promoted to every class because I always passed. I was in... Uh, social art because I did health science. I did a bit of chemistry and the other subjects were pure art and they were in science class. And they would actually take their time from their section, the building sec the science section and come to our section, which is the social art building to come and bully me. They will come past because in secondary school those days you used to have about maybe three subjects in a day and four subjects in a day. After each subject, you had a break of maybe 10 or 15 minutes and you had different teachers coming in to take their subjects. So in a day in secondary school, you had three different subjects. So it wasn't like in primary school when you had arithmetic all day, English all day. It was a, a different setup. So in between, in between two subjects, we had two teachers coming and they know we had 10 minutes or 15 minutes break. They would come into the class and she would this, uh, and my, my, co my cousin, my so-called cousin who went to lie, very tiny, tiny thing, you know, she never grew up, she never grew. She was always tiny, she was always that size, but she was aging, but never grew. Um, would come with the two other uh, girls and she always at the middle and she watched them and i remember that this so-called friend uh, who believed what my cousin told her that i stole her exercise book she saw me putting it in my bag i was hiding it she caught me that's what my cousin meant to tell her she will be hitting her hand like this on the table in front of everybody sometimes she will walk to my desk and start hitting her hand and guess what? I never retaliated and never said anything to her. And my cousin will be laughing. And then the other one, I don't want to mention her name, who was so proud, will be laughing. Because she was she was the brain behind it. She used to ask them to, I mean, sometimes they just make the decision that I was the one they were going to bully for that day. And they did it constantly for four years. And my own blood 
whom I uh, caused a relative whom I thought was my blood was part of it. My dear, to cut the whole story short, do you know that what they bullied me for, what they bullied an innocent person for, what the names that I was called and what I was accused of manifested life in the bullier's life whilst we were in, the, in secondary school. Let me repeat that. I was bullied innocent. I was, I'm innocent. I was, I, 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 they bullied me, an innocent person, called names, called all what sort of things, publicly in presence of people. Nobody came to my aid. Yeah? Some people will start, when they see me coming, they start shifting. It got to a stage where, when, when I'm coming on the pavement, when I come out of the class, maybe I'm going to use the toilet, I'm going to buy something, or maybe the teacher has sent me to go and put the file in the staff room, and I'm coming on the pavement, and I see them coming. I used to jump off the pavement and walk to the other building and go. I avoided them. But no matter how I avoided these three bullies, they always look for me to bully. In fact, it, I was like a ping pong. And they enjoyed it. They had the joy. They were so happy. Some people are so evil that they love to see people suffer. And they enjoy it. And they recruit other people around them. And they enjoy it. And so, going back to what I was saying. She, this bully, this lady, this girl who bullied me constantly for four years. What she accused me of, I'll tell you what she called me. She called me thief. Can you imagine a young girl in secondary school being accused of thiefery? Called me thief and she would say it publicly. She bullied me. She called me all sorts of names. She would come and hit my table while I'm sitting on my desk. Not minding my business in my class. She would come, leave her class science section and come to art section and she'll be hitting her hand on my table you will see you will see you will see you are a bullying and then she will talk and talk and talk and talk I, will, I never said anything i'll just look at her like that this is me sitting on my on my table on my desk and she's standing i look at her like that and then when she bully and bully she'll walk away so could you imagine the effect it had on me could you imagine the effect it had on other people some people will believe and they will perpetuate the story without finding out the truth you could be in the same class with somebody in the same secondary school and they don't even know you she will body shame me because then i was slender she will body shame me and and say look at my legs look at how i'm walking she criticized the hatred that spilled from that girl's heart. It was, it, it was, it was, I couldn't imagine it. It went on for years and years and years and years. And she never took time to ask me if I found the book. I couldn't imagine somebody that I, sometimes when I was going to school, I used to fry plantain, you know, plantain crepes. I'll put it in a bag. And when I get to school, when we get to the class, we used to eat, eat it together. So I couldn't imagine somebody whom I've known from primary school. We ended up in secondary school, not just secondary school, the same secondary school. We ended up in the same class, sitting this, uh, uh, together on the same t uh, uh, desk. Because we had a long bench, we used to sit together and do everything together. Eating plantain chips together, now turn around and start bullying me. Because my cousin lied to her and it went on for four years do you know that she was now accused by a, a, a top government personality in the state at that time a fearsome personality i think maybe the second or the third person after the governor of the state 
accused her of theft. The uh, armed forces of the state, the police now came to my secondary school to see the principal, which was a, dis a disgrace because we had a reputation. My school was very, very good. It's totally unheard of. Totally unheard of. Came, let me see, police officers. Yes, the police. They came to my secondary school to investigate and reported the case to the principal, who was a Scottish lady. And she's a disciplinarian and she's a no nonsense person. So, what this person accused an innocent person of for four years manifested in her life. And she was humiliated and disgraced. Guess what? She was expelled. We were in her fourth year and she was expelled from a top reputable girls secondary school who was that school was named after a queen in that state. It's a queen's college, the state. She was expelled from, the, from, from her school. I mean, in, in your fourth year, you only had one year to go. She was expelled. She was taken into custody. And... <laughs> She wasn't even living with her parents. She was doing omodo. You know what omodo is? When you live with a relative and they bring you up, but you do things like a house help, but they will give you shelter, food, and education. That's what she was doing. Then her guardian kicked her out of her home in an exclusive area, a posh area in the States. If you don't have money those days, you can't live in that area. It was a government reserved area. You had a lot of expatriates and very rich indigents of the state living there. Or government officials like the army or police, top ranking army or the police, they were living there. You couldn't live there those days. Not what it has become now. Kicked her out of her and I, I know the her, her house was next to my primary school beautiful home trees garden fruit gates white creamy house beautiful beautiful home i'm telling you even then they had sprinklers that that that, that water the plants and flowers beautiful home beautiful home kicked out of her home and that was when people now discovered that the image that she has been projecting in the secondary school wasn't even hers. It was her mother. When she was asked to bring her mother because her guardian refused to go with her because her guardian was a well-educated woman who had a good reputation, has a good name and had a good top professional government job. All her children were educated. They were university graduates and she didn't want her to come and spoil that reputation because that's not what she taught her and that's not how she brought her up. So she kicked her out. Guess what? This person ended up going to, you know, because those days you had morning section, you had afternoon section. You can have uh, one school, but with four. You can have school one, school two, school three, school four, but they are all the same name. So she ended, ended up going to Niger College afternoon section. From Niger College afternoon section those days. So it's like um you know, when you say somebody is you can't you can't compare GL to Diamond. You can't compare GL to Diamond. Or you can't compare uh 12 karat gold to 100 karat. <coughs> it's different. You can't. So she ended up leaving a top reputable school to another school. Why am I sharing this with you all? I'm sharing this because 
If you did not see something, shut your mouth. And even if you see, shut your mouth. Because not everything you think you saw is exactly the way it is. Why am I saying this? The words that comes out from your mouth is stronger than any other praise or prayer that a cop will give you. It's in the Bible that says, out of your mouth come forth. You are the only one that can prophesy goodness unto your life. There are certain people that you do not accuse of the things they haven't done. If you accuse them, you wish them bad. As you are accusing them and wishing them bad, the thing is building up and it will now manifest in your own life. What happened to these three ladies? The lady, the girl who was accused, accusing me, bullying me, calling me all sorts of names, was embarrassingly, disgracefully expelled from the school. She was taken into custody and it was in the local news. It was a disgrace. And when they asked her to bring her mother, her parents, she didn't bring. She denied her mother. Because her mother was a local woman who sold food in the market. Not the person or the image she has projected and portrayed to people. It was a shock. Let God begin to embarrass your enemies. You see, when God begins to deal with your enemies, there is no mercy. Do you see how everything manifested and came to pass in her life? You trouble somebody, an innocent person for four years, and you think you can get away with it. All heads are not equal. All fingers are not equal. There are some people when you are planning towards evil towards them, this evil will be happening in your own life. And the person will be prospering. That is the grace of God. That is the grace of God. This girl was expelled. Embarrassingly, everybody, it was, everybody knew. Even to the gate man, or even to those who were in class one, knew it was a disgrace. It was a disgrace. The whole school, they were teachers, it was a disgrace. It was so embarrassing. So she stopped coming to the school. And then, the instigator who buys uh, Coke and meat pie and sausage for them ended up repeating a class. She thought she knew it all. Repeated the class. So she was now a class below me. So when I found out she repeated the class when I was in my final year, you know what I did? I went to pass her, pass her class, the building, the, her building section. I went to pass. I would look at her like this. I won't say anything. I never said a word. I would look at her like this and I would walk past. So somebody who used to do like that was now doing like this. I had now bow down. Shame. Then my cousin... Who went to lie? When she saw me coming, she was not the one running to the other pavement, the other side of the building. She was so embarrassed of herself. Because the person she went to report me to was a thief that made the national local paper and was expelled. The other one who was buying her Coke and Fanta repeated. It, listen, she never even, my cousin never even went to her friend to go and see her in her class because she was repeating. She left her that she didn't remember. And she now made friends with somebody else. She was never comfortable again. May God defeat your enemies. Say amen. May God defeat your enemies. Anybody who try to give you a name or a title that God has not given you. 
May God defeat them and embarrass them. Never answer the name that God has not given you. Never accept the title that God has not bestowed on you. Never wear a garment that God has not put on you. So I thought I should share this with everybody. When I think about it's been going on in my mind for 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 years. It just comes in and goes, it comes in and goes. And I thought I need to share this. If you are that person who's going through what I have I have, 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 have experienced and shared, if you are that person who is going through something similar, instead of you to reply, go and kneel down and pray. God answered all prayers and he will answer your prayer at the right time and you will see how God will disgrace that person publicly. They will run. So somebody who was trying to bully me to get out of my secondary school was the one who, who they, they didn't even give her the chance to run. She didn't even have the privilege to run. She was kicked out. God be praised. So I want to urge women who join other people to gossip and spread news. Don't inherit another person's enemy don't no matter how friend friendly you are or how close you are it's not your business some people inherit curses some people inherit other people's problem that's what happened to this person today the other one repeated even today she's not all right the one who repeated who was foiling who was sponsoring all that bullying because of hatred and jealousy it's not a normal human being to be. So I thank God for the deliverance because the truth will always set you free. Light will always overshadow darkness. So I want this to be a learning process for everybody, including myself. It has been a learning process and it's still a learning process. There are certain things that happened to you years ago. And such occasions will want to arise and you will know how to avoid it. And you always use your experience, which is your I story, your story, your experience. Own it. You will always use it to overcome bullies in future. May God fight and be victorious over unseen enemies in our midst. Whether in the family, in the workplace, socially so thank you very much for tuning on to my channel today remember that the words that comes out from your mind your mouth the words that comes out from your mind the words that comes out from your mouth is mightier than any other prayer so i want to seize this opportunity to say thank you very much for tuning on to my channel today Remember, this is your favorite babe, your favorite titty, Kirsty Valentine. See you next time in my video.